This is Oris's Gen 4 NVMe SSD, an M.2 form factor SSD that's blazing fast. Today, we're going to talk about what gives an SSD like this its immense performance, run a few basic tests, and see how it can benefit a user's everyday experience. Let's get into it. Real quick, I wanted to plug my newly made Discord server for this channel. I made it after quite a few requests and it would be the ideal place to ask questions, show off your setups, and just talk tech in general. Link will be in the description. Before we talk about the Aorus Gen 4 SSD, let's quickly and roughly go over what a storage drive is and why SSDs are the quickest drive option to choose from. Even if you aren't a computer savvy person, there's a chance that at some point in your lifetime you've heard of a hard drive. Whether it be from characters in a movie talking about stealing data from a hard drive or when you're shopping online for a computer device and see the letters HDD somewhere in the title. Basically, every device needs a primary place to store data, and that component would be the hard drive. Only now, storage technology has developed to the point where we have SSDs, or solid state drives, instead of hard drives. The primary difference between a hard drive and a solid state drive is right in their names. A hard drive, or HDD, for hard disk drive, is a mechanical drive that stores data on a physical spinning disk whereas an SSD, solid state drive, has no moving parts and stores data on small flash memory chips. Since SSDs have no moving parts, they're much more robust and less prone to damage or failure. SSDs also come in a few different form factors, the most common being 2.5 inch and M.2 drives. M.2 drives can either be SATA or NVMe types, the faster of the two being NVMe. In layman's terms, NVMe SSDs are faster than 2.5 inch drives and SATA M.2 drives because they can transfer data to and from the motherboard at a higher rate. But you might be asking yourself, what difference does having a faster drive make? Well, my friend, I'm glad you asked. Your drive speed influences how long it takes your computer to boot up, how fast applications and games load, the speed at which files are transferred on your computer, as well as overall system responsiveness. This is because every drive reads and writes data at a specific speed, usually measured in megabytes per second. In short, the faster your drive or drives are, the less time you spend waiting. This isn't going to be a full-blown lesson on drives, as that's a topic that can get pretty lengthy. I just wanted to give a brief, simple explanation for anyone who might want to know the role storage drives play in a computer. That being said, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that letting your drive fill up, no matter what kind it is, definitely affects its performance. So make sure to manage your drives and keep it below about 90% capacity so that your PC doesn't suffer from performance issues. Now that we've had a little mini lesson on drives, we can focus on the one we're looking at today, Oris's Gen 4 NVMe SSD. As the title says, this is an NVMe M.2 SSD that is PCIe 4.0 compatible. PCIe 4.0 compatibility essentially means that data can be transferred at a higher rate per PCIe lane than with previous 3.0 versions. In the Aorus Gen 4, this equates to maximum sequential read speeds of up to 5000 megabytes per second and maximum sequential write speeds of up to 4400 megabytes per second. At least, that's with the 1 and 2 terabyte versions. They also make a 500 gigabyte version that has the same max read speeds but only 2500 megabytes per second maximum write speeds. I don't know why I say only, because that's still really fast. We have the 1 terabyte version here, so that's the one we'll be testing. Some other features of this SSD are here on the screen. If any of it interests you, you can pause the video. When looking at the SSD, you might notice that there is no heat sink or heat spreader other than a thin copper peel that doubles as the product label. This is because Aorus decided to sell their Gen 4 SSD without a heat spreader to utilize the M.2 heat spreader that is often included with many motherboards. But don't worry if your motherboard doesn't have an included heat spreader, because Aorus also sells a version of this SSD with a huge copper one. I'm sure many of you have seen this before. Of course, if you do want the heat spreader included, it's going to cost extra. The price of the version without the heat spreader is what makes this SSD stand out from its competitors. The 1TB version that I have here currently sells for 160 USD, with its closest Gen 4 competitors being the 1TB Sabrent Rocket and the XBG Gamix S50 for just a few more George Washingtons. The testbed that we'll be using today is the PC that I recently built in my How to Build a PC video, linked if you want to check that out. Our CPU is the Ryzen 5 5600X, sitting in the Aorus X570 Elite motherboard, using 16GB of Team Group's T4S Excalibur RAM with an XMP of 4000MHz at CL19. 
CPU cooler is the EK 240mm AIO, GPU is the RTX 3070 Gaming Eagle from Gigabyte, power supply is a 750 watt gold rated unit from Cooler Master, and it's all built in the Lian Li Land Cool 215. With that out of the way, let's begin our tests. First and foremost, we'll run sequential and random read and write speed tests on Crystal Disk Mark to see what our maximum speeds are. Keep in mind that this test doesn't necessarily reflect speeds that you would see during everyday use, but pushes to see what our maximum read and write speeds can be. As we can see from our tests, which I ran multiple times with very similar results, our maximum sequential read speeds do reach and slightly exceed 5000 megabytes per second as advertised. Our max sequential write speeds fall just short of the advertised 4400 megabytes per second at 4280 megabytes per second, but that's no speed to scoff at. Now we're going to start a few real world scenario tests, starting with our cold boot test. We'll start a timer when pressing the power button and stop when we're in Windows. Out of 5 boot tests, on average our wait time is about 13 seconds, which was pretty consistent across every test. When checking our restart times from within Windows, our average of 5 restart tests is about 22 seconds, starting our timer when the restart button is clicked and stopping when we're back in Windows. Now we're going to look at our load times for a couple of different titles. Today I've chosen three titles to test, Cyberpunk 2077, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Control. Our first timer will start when clicking open in the launcher and will end when we're in the game's main menu. Then we'll do another test to see how fast we load into each game from the menu. Starting with Cyberpunk, our time from launch to main menu is about 28 seconds after all the opening dev logos and disclaimers. From the main menu to actually being able to play the game, our wait time was typically about 6 or 7 seconds, which may slightly vary depending on where you last left off in Night City and how many game assets need to load. This actually applies to all games, by the way. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn, our wait time from launcher to main menu was about 15 seconds. From there, our main menu to in game time was about 25 seconds. Although in Horizon, you can wait in the main menu for shaders to optimize before playing, which will cause load times to decrease. This first go, I didn't wait for shaders to optimize, which is what caused my game to look so choppy. Running it back to the main menu to wait for the shaders to optimize, which did take a few minutes, our wait time from main menu only decreased to about 21 seconds, but the game didn't look so choppy. Lastly, looking at control, our wait time from launch to main menu was about 31 seconds. From there, loading into the game, our wait time is about 10 seconds, being the quickest load time of all games so far. A good sign for all three of these AAA titles is that an SSD with these speeds is able to take you from desktop to in-game in roughly a minute, give or take a few seconds. For our last test, a file transfer, I'll be copying a 2.8GB video file from a USB flash drive while monitoring temps and transfer speeds. This is a somewhat older USB drive that I've had for about 8 years. It's a 32GB USB 2.0 drive, and I do think that it will negatively affect the write speeds of our SSD, but I figured this would be a really good example of real world conditions by just grabbing my closest flash drive and copying over a somewhat large video file. When copying the file from the USB onto the SSD by dragging it onto our desktop, the transfer was much quicker than when copying the file back onto the USB drive. Copying from the flash drive, utilizing our SSD's write speeds, the 2.8GB file was copied in almost exactly 2 minutes, with our write speeds hovering right around the 33MB per second mark. When copying the file back from the SSD onto the flash drive, our time was significantly increased at over 10 minutes, with very slow write speeds well below 1 megabyte per second. Again, I'd mostly chalk this up to the flash drive being USB 2.0, as this SSD is capable of writing much faster. This test wasn't the best show of our SSD's write speeds, but I still think it qualifies as a good real world scenario. As far as temperatures go, when idling, temps were always around the 40 degrees celsius mark. I never saw the SSD get any hotter than 43 degrees celsius when loading games or transferring files, according to Crystal Disk Info, and during Crystal Disk Mark's test, temps peaked at 55 degrees when maxing out sequential write speeds. 
Not to say the temps won't get hotter than this under different circumstances, but according to these test results, it doesn't seem as though high temperatures should be of any concern during typical everyday use. Until PCIe 5.0 is released, which could be this year as some specs for PCIe 6.0 are already under works, a good PCIe 4.0 SSD is the best you can get at the moment. Considering other competitors' prices, Oris's Gen 4 offering without an included heatsink is the best bang for your buck Gen 4 M.2 on the market right now. And it is worth noting that if your motherboard's chipset doesn't support PCIe 4.0, you'll be locked at PCIe 3.0 speeds with the Gen 4 SSD, which are still lightning fast. But should this be a reason not to get a PCIe Gen 4 SSD and instead opt for an older Gen 3 SSD? If you ask me, not necessarily. If you do run on PCIe Gen 3 hardware, you can still get a Gen 4 SSD and use it until you decide to upgrade to Gen 4 hardware. That way, you'll already have an up-to-date SSD ready to pair with your shiny new Gen 4 components. There are multiple options on the market for Gen 4 M.2 SSDs and they're all pretty great, including the light models of some of the SSDs I didn't include. But when it comes to Oris's Gen 4, you're getting equal read and write speed performance for an overall cheaper price tag. Anyways, that's going to be all I've got for you in this video. I hope you found it informative. Feel free to ask any questions down below or in our new Discord server linked below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.